Hamish, good morning. Hi, Prasanna. Hi, Sheila. Good morning. Good morning, Ash. Hi. Hi, Prasanna. Uh, so, Prasanna, have you gone through uh, the previous recordings? Uh, Friday, I didn't uh, done, uh, but uh, Thursday, I refreshed it. Okay. I will uh, walk through and come with, uh, along with you. Uh, okay, fine. Okay, so I think uh, last week we were able to create the project. So uh, till that part, were you able, uh, were you good? Friday, I think, huh? No, Thursday. Thursday, okay. I, I'm able to understand. Okay. Friday, I didn't able to uh, see. No problem, you proceed. I will uh, follow with you. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, I'll just give a quick recap of what we did on Friday. Assuming that uh, you have already uh, gone through uh, the Thursday session. So Friday, we uh, actually covered the burdening. Okay, now you can see my screen, right? Yeah, I, I can see. Okay, so burdening is something which is an additional cost to your project, to your organization. For example, if you are going to the office, so uh, the furniture which the office is giving, the other facility which the uh, your organization is giving, any other things apart from your raw cost. Let's say uh, they are charging uh, $80 uh, for you. I mean, they are giving you $80. And then, sorry, sorry, my bad. They are charging $80 on your behalf. Okay. And uh, on the top of it, they are incurring some additional costs like the your fringe benefits, uh, uh, your insurance, then your uh, uh, furniture, uh, your coffee vending machines, all these things are the additional cost for them. So that is a burden for them. Okay. 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 So the first setup is the burden cost base, wherein we will decide what is the cost on which the burden is going to get applied, whether it is a labor cost or any material cost miscellaneous cost then the second is what kind of a burden you are applying like i said fringe benefit like uh, employer payroll uh, cost your insurance cost uh, your pension cost all that is your type of a burden we call it as a fringe burden this kind of a burden then there can be an overhead burden also in which you will have your rental supplies your support staff would be there you know, your security team is your support staff to assist you. 
So all these are the type of burden which is going to get applied on this burden cost base or the cost. Then we have the burden structure in which we will tell the system whether this will be additive or precedence and uh, this is our burden cost code. And this is where we are actually associated, associating that this is my cost base and this kind of a burden will be applied to this cost base. And this is the name of the burden structure. Now this burden structure we will assign to a burden schedule. We will create a burden schedule. We will create a burden structure against which organization hierarchy it is going to be, what would be the version and what would be the multiplier. So all these things we will do in the burden schedule. Okay. Okay. And then we run this program. This is not necessary. It automatically gets triggers, but you can run this program to recompile all the burden changes which you have done till now. And when you create the project type, this is the place wherein you will give your burden schedule. Okay. Okay. So this is this was a quick recap recap of what we did last time. Today, okay. Have you uh, seen the how we create the project? Yeah, that I saw. Okay. Uh, okay. So, do you guys remember that uh, when we were creating the project template? Uh, okay, I'll show you once. Okay, see, this is my project plan type. Okay, so currently a standard project plan type is associated with this, but we need to give a plan type to a project template. Now, this project plan type can be empty also. This can be a default project plan type also. But where this plan type is necessary, okay, so uh, you may have a hierarchy in your organization that uh, there will be a, pro a project administrator, uh, there will be a project planner, there will be a project manager. So each one of these guys will have their own access and obviously they cannot uh, you know intervene in each other work. So let's say uh, the job of the project planner is to plan a project okay what kind of a resources would be there okay forget about the resources resources uh, you know the resource manager can do but uh, what kind of a rates you will use you, you will going to apply uh, how you are going to capture the progress of that project so n number of things which comes under the planning part that will be done by a project planner and he is not a project administrator, so he cannot go ahead and create a project template, but he can create the project plan. Okay. And that project plan 
you can associate with this template on the basis of this template then the right number of projects will get created this is one of the part of project control that we are someone is controlling the project by creating a project plan you are getting this theory mm. So, uh, no, can you please repeat it? Okay. So, uh, let's say uh, you are a project planner. Now you say that, okay, uh, whichever projects is going uh, is coming for the consulting, uh, only agile methodology will be applicable for that. We will go as per the agile methodology that we will create sprints. Uh, we will take customer feedback. We will not follow the old waterfall model. So that is a plan for this particular project. Now you associate that project plan here to the project template. Now whichever project are, cre are getting created with this project template that will by default will have a agile methodology plan that will work as per the agile methodology. Now tomorrow your requirement is no for uh, uh, some part we also we, we cannot completely abide by agile we need a hybrid solution okay some part of a waterfall some part of a hybrid so then what will happen you are not a project administrator you cannot directly go and change the project template but what you can do you can change the project plan okay so you can edit the project plan, you can manipulate some of the project plan details and that details will be applicable for all the projects created under that project template. Getting it? Even yes. for existing projects like which are being created already, even for that, the update will go and take it or only for the new one, it will uh, be applicable. Okay, so see some part will, so let's say if you have created the billing, okay, you have generated the invoice revenue against a contract. So for those things, there won't be any updation, okay? But it's still like uh, uh, descriptive flex field, forecasting and all that, you can do the changes. So based on how the pro uh, project has been progressed, it will allow you to change for the older projects. For the newer projects, yes, you can, uh, you know, they will be created as per the new project plan only. Okay, getting the importance of project plan. Uh, Ash, then you mean to say project type is different and project plan type is different? Yeah, project type is different. Okay. And in project type, we are deciding what kind of a work we are going to do in this project. Okay. Whether we are uh, we are generating the invoice, whether this project is for only research and development, whether this is a sponsored project, whether this project will be used for capitalization so all these things you will decide when you create the project plan sorry project type on the basis of that project type you will create your project template and on those project templates then you will be creating your projects now what we are doing here is we are <clears throat> discussing about uh, the project controls when I say project controls, it means how you are going to control your projects. Is there any team who is going to control your projects from outside? So from for, for that perspective, this topic is relevant. Okay. So this project, uh, I just have one uh, question. Like I, mm -hmm. I came up, but I'm not sure whether it will be. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, uh, like manager and the control, uh, the project admin don't have any idea of what will be the project budget. So the project plan team will consider this will be the base price for this project cost. It should be only this and, limit. It, yes. Is it practice? what? <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes, you are right. So let's say that is what I'm going to tell you in the next slide. Do you see this financial plan type associated here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This financial plan type is actually the budget, budgetary control. So you remember in e-business suit also we have budgetary controls like absolute that service opportunity value you mean to say huh? service Sorry? opportunity value not in EBS. In, in EBS we had budgetary controls right Abs uh, this absolute advisory uh, have you worked on it before EBS I worked but not the one what you are saying it might be in my organization they have used as a service opportunity value like they have the control of the Shila, that is a additional thing Sheila hmm. opportunity is an additional one okay what he trying is uh, for uh, this budget we allocate some uh, amount and uh, baseline that uh, information funding is right. trying to get. Right. So you mean to say in the financial plan type only the budget limit they will be uh, uh, not not in the financial plan type in the financial see what we are discussing here is about the structure okay we are only creating the structure the what will be the budget how much they will allocate the baselining uh, funding the, this this part will be taken care by the end user okay so we are only creating the structure for them to enable them to do all these things so the structure you're saying it is it like but it will be like only uh, two if it is two only within that two they have to do the budgeting okay let's say if i give a budget uh if i want to enforce a budgetary control like absolute so absolute means that you will never go, uh, you, you cannot procure anything for this project if your budget has uh, reached. Okay. So that setup we will do here. Now, what is that budget? Okay. Whether it is 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh, 1 CR, that is up to the business. Okay. They will, they will have to create that budget. They will have to, you know, do that funding. That is not our job okay okay our job is to put the validations it to uh, enforce the security in order as per their requirement now what they do with that is their business scenario okay so what we are doing for for, for your example what you said like whether you will be able to create uh, whether you will be able to create uh, control the budget or not yes we can do that. <clears throat> okay, got it? Yes. Now, uh, I'll just share one screenshot. Uh, before you. that, one uh, doubt, uh, mm. Hush. Yeah, yeah, tell me. Okay, suppose we are working for a pro billing project type, okay? Hmm. For uh, some other company, okay, what we will do is uh, we will uh, uh, enter the events and uh, create a draft invoice and then, then we will send the invoice to customer and get the billing, okay? Mm, right. Uh, but uh, for, for this thing, we won't uh, um, burden uh, that thing and all we are not doing, okay? No, so sorry, I didn't get the complete question. No, see, uh, suppose if I'm working for some other uh, customer mails, okay, hmm. my time sheet uh, using uh, draft invoice, we are uh, generating and sending the invoice to 
customer and we get the amount okay hmm hmm fine for that uh, why we are not uh, burdening the thing i am asking i don't know whether the question is valid or not but uh, i have doubt i am asking no, we can use the burden no? see now consider so, a scenario burden is uh, optional one no? yes it is optional okay okay now now consider no, the same what scenario what i am saying is burdening only when we for expenditure type creation only we are doing that we are not using for invoice thing and all no 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 see invoicing you can now you gave the example for event right yeah okay that is a very basic way of creating the invoice you can create the invoice based on the cost you have captured right okay. so now you have captured $100 <coughs> okay for a particular employee now you have applied a burden on that and it comes to 130 now now your cost is 130 your burden cost is 130 now based on this cost you want to generate the invoice you can do that okay 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 you can use okay. a different invoice method instead of uh, you know like I, I, okay let's go back to the e business suit okay so in e business suit we had only three options one is event one is cost and uh, there was one more i forgot work 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 okay, okay. so these okay so these were three now you are telling that for event with the event you will be creating the invoice so what is what happens when you create the invoice from event you create an event and you simply give the amount there the event yeah. amount is the final amount for the invoice creation but for the cost part it it's not like that it takes your expenditure item in pick, it consider your expenditure items right and your yeah. expenditure items can be a burden or can be a raw cost so if you are using a cost based uh, you know uh, invoice method or billing method then your burdening will come into picture in fact if you do the work work also there also your burdening can come into picture but event is a very simple thing like you just create a event you create an amount so there is no concept there like there is no concept of costing there is no concept of burdening we are including so it is a very vanilla method of doing the invoicing okay 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 so that event method normally we use so recently we have used the same event method in fusion also so what what was there like we had a third party system in which the calculations were happening okay all the billing related calculations were happening and then they were creating a they were giving us a final amount that for this particular uh, event this is the final amount so we just have to create the event with that amount we just don't have to put all those logic that they were already doing in third party we just have to create an event with that particular amount that is it so with in such scenario you will use event but if you are using costing and on the basis of costing then you will uh, be creating the invoices yes then you know it is uh, uh, you will have to use the burden there okay got it got it got it <clears throat> okay so coming back to uh, the con project controls now you see this table okay and you tell me what you understand from this table this manage period profile you may to say hmm? yes yes uh, grouping the months for first thing is 12 months okay hmm. second one is 6 uh, months to 6 months uh, they split it hmm. hmm. third one is split it to 3 right 
right right so exactly so this is what we are do we are grouping the periods actually so at some stage uh, so if, if in your project lifespan what will happen that you will be uh, collecting the cost or forget about collecting the cost a lot of time you will have to show the data to your stakeholders okay so what what happens that what what happens there that you create the period profile okay that if there is an initial stage of the project so every year every month you will uh, you know showcase the data to your stakeholder then as the project progresses then you will say okay i will now share the uh, progress uh, every six month uh, then i will show it every quarter then when i'm reaching the deadline then maybe every month then when the deadline has crossed you have successfully deployed the project okay now again you know once in a year i can showcase uh, you know what all are the profit and losses what all what is the progress of the project what is the forecast of the project so all these financial reports and analysis you can do uh, you know uh, in at any stage of your project for that these period profiles are given so period profile suggests the system like uh, you can group uh, uh, you know uh, the periods in a certain format for example here is the case now here the start date of the project is july 1st 2005 and this is a 10 year project okay so forget about okay so see forget about this preceding part okay this this was not given here but this was ongoing this 36 now you see from the to 12 okay so from 12 now july 2008 to 2009 okay this is number of periods okay now here 6 july 2009 to december 2009 for six months now january 2010 to march 2010 so these are the number of periods okay here number of periods are 12 okay which means from july 2008 to july 2009 there are 12 periods here okay so these are the number of periods now here in some stage we have to showcase the data maybe you have this requirement that in this period we will be reporting on a monthly basis so here the number of periods you have given one so every month you will be grouping the period i mean you have grouped the period on a monthly basis like this depending on what is your accounting period if it is a monthly weekly like that and this period profile will do nothing but it will group your periods getting this concept yes sir. okay and this is a non-mandatory setup this we are just uh, you know giving it in order to help the user to group their periods and to showcase the their stakeholders the uh, project progress and the forecastings okay shila are you are you getting this yes sir now, how do we do that <clears throat> So you go to project control here. So we will be discussing these ones also, but because now we are freshly joined, so I'm discussing this complex topic and this we have already discussed the value set, the control. So I will discuss this later in the session. Okay. <coughs> oh, sorry. Okay, so this is the default profiles given to us in which it is only 
वन 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 हेज बीन गिवन ओके यू कैन क्रिएट योर ओन प्रोफाइल Next, next, next. Starting period. I give four. Okay. So now I give three. Now I give twelve. Now what will happen? That from November twenty one to November twenty two, there will be twelve periods. Okay. Then there will be group of three period from November twenty two to November December Jan twenty three three. Then from Jan. Twenty-three to check March, March twenty-three is again three April, April two June twenty-three again three. Now there will be July. August, September, and October. And this will be one, 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 one. Okay, getting this profile. Hello, Get, yes, getting sir. this example? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, just a minute. Ash, this profile you are showing, right? Uh mm huh. -hmm. Is it different from the PA periods, or is it like? Based on this only, we will be setting up the PA periods. No, see, periods are are completely different. I mean, this is only a profile. Okay, this is a way we are grouping the periods. Okay, this will not impact your period closures. Okay. Or your frequency of the period. Okay. This is another concept. This is we are using the periods. This is okay. like uh, only to showcase what is the status of the uh, project. Yes, not status. not only not only the status of the project. See, when you work on a project, there are n number of things. It you it's not the status alone. It's the budget. Okay, it's uh, uh uh I mean how they are performing, then how many resources you will be needed. Then how many budget you have consumed? How much is left? So there will be n number of things, n number of real time data you will need when you work on a you know larger project, n number of financial decisions you have to think. So that organizations take on the basis of like how it is performing, how it is doing in a certain period. Okay, so many organizations have different way of doing it. so they create a profile they create they group those things like okay this is my like you have seen the example like okay this is my first quarter okay 
this is in in uh, i mean for some organization will have three quarters combined okay they will say okay this is my tri quarters and this is uh, based on this tri quarter i will be making a decision okay ba based on this year performance i am making a decision so these are the stats project stats you will be needed at each and every point of time in the during the life cycle of the entire project okay and these are the profile these are the grouping of the periods if if you don't want to use it if if your organization does not have this requirement you this is an additional thing you can simply skip this and it is not needed you can go with the normal monthly frequency thing what you have here you can choose any of it okay Mostly they will follow the standards, correct? Only rare case uh, this type of uh, customization will do. Mostly standard only will follow. Okay, but yeah, people who are I mean uh, the organizations who are uh, you know uh, very much uh, project oriented. Okay, like I said, GE, TCS, you will see thousands of projects. These guys are daily dealing on a daily basis so they will have their managers their portfolio managers will have a slightly different criteria of how they look into the project okay they have a different criteria of evaluating uh, uh you know uh, they have different criteria of evaluating a project so there they can you know uh, these things help those people but if you asking a vanilla scenario then this may not be needed with this particular period profile which is default one 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 you can go ahead and you can make your life easy okay i'll just get some water one minute okay
Bread curve. So remember, some time back we were talking about bread curve. Ashu, why is it slow? Sorry, is it fine now? Yeah. Okay, you remember some time back we were talking about uh, spread curves. Okay, I'll show you where we were talking about. Well, we were creating the expenditures. The curve system. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Not here where it was even I forgot. Expenditure uh, type. In expenditure type. No, not here also. I think manage labor resources, manage resource classes. Okay, we we'll see. This is spread curves we were talking about, right? Yes. So from where these spread curves are coming, we can control that. Oh, sorry. So I'll go to project control and see this is these are already there. Okay. Now first I will show you the existing one. Let's say even. So see the distribution factor is 10, 10, 10, 10. Fine. Now I will show you a bell curve. See, 0, 4, 10, 12, 14, 12, 10, 4. So, do you see? There is a bell curve here. It means that at the center, the distribution is having high density and initially and in the last, you will have low density. So, this bell curve is being used normally uh, during our appraisal uh, by each organization. So what they do, they give one person, I mean, the top rating, then majority of the people lies in this area. Like there will be four people who, who are getting a, a two-pointer. There are from three-pointer to eight-pointer, there are somewhere around majority of the people I mean 3 to 7 then there will be one who will be getting 8 pointer maybe there is one who will be getting 9 pointer also okay so let's say if you have a team of 10 peoples okay so there will be one person who got the A band which is the highest band then uh, two people have got the B band which is a slightly lesser than A band, then five people got the C band, 
which is average now there is there are two guys who are not performing well so they got the d band okay so this is how the bell curve work okay majority of the bands are five and it is a c band and majority of the people has got it so likewise there are many spread curves so why these spread curves have been used this is basically to allocate the budget in 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 a particular format let's say during the initial phase of the project uh, you may not need that much of an amount but then during the midway when the project is you know uh, is is active and is working then you may need a lot of money then maybe during the last stage you may you have already finished all of the things and in the end you may not need uh, uh, a lot of money or in the end you may need a lot of money okay so let's say s curve okay if you see the s curve it's like initially you need a lot of money then in between you may not need that much of money then here you need a, a lot of money okay and then during the final stage you don't need a good amount of money to spend so these are the curves you can create your own curve as per your project requirement okay so you can say amount scale of 100 okay so you can say um, during the first phase i only need you know 10% uh, of the budget okay now let's say let's give it 0 let's give it 5 let's give it 10 okay now 15 15 15 now here consistently you need a budget okay now here you don't have this requirement you have some breathing time but again at the end you need a budget okay so this is how it's up to your requirement how you want to distribute the budget or your expenses or you want to distribute you know uh, the budget or the expenses among the resources that completely depends on you but you can create a curve you can create a pattern here what we are doing we are simply creating a pattern that how my budget will get allocated or how my cost will be distributed uh, you know, uh, in the resources or in the life cycle of the project. So then this spread curve, you can either allocate when you are doing the resource classification or during the budget allocation also, you can use this. Get, getting this one? Yes, I <clears throat> Okay. 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 Is it a, uh, only for the reporting purpose or it's a mandatory option for the project? No, this is, no, no, none of this is mandatory. This is not. Okay, but uh, you might need this. Okay. okay. Uh, spread curves are something uh, you may need to distribute your uh, budget or you know when you create the resource class uh, so if it is not uh, uh, an evenly distributed then you may need to use this you you may need to have to use this but yeah this is not mandatory this is not mandatory okay. yes okay okay
so now we will be coming to okay here the shortcut is also given okay directly you can create your spread curve and then you can associate your resource class to this spread curve now we are talking about the financial plan type and see in the financial plan type there will be so many things okay so even if you don't understand few of them it's okay let's see this standard one which is approved cost budget now you give the name like this the plan class so budget just a minute okay so now uh, have you have, have you worked on the budgets before any of you yes we have worked on it yes budget you know what is a uh, cost budget and the revenue budget and uh... forecast hello yes sir you are aware of those things okay so you have to decide here whether it is your of uh, this plan which you are creating okay so if you check this as a designated as approved okay let me create a new one that will be more clearer okay so here we, we we can select that okay this is a budget this is a forecast or this is a financial project plan simply for now let's put it as a budget okay so this is my budget okay now in e business suit to create a budget what we had to do we had to create an agreement then we had to do the funding then we had to come and baseline that funding right yes so here <clears throat> first we are creating the structure and then in within the project itself we can you know create the budget and uh, uh, associate that budget amount for that particular project okay and this financial type we will associate with the project plan and that project plan will be associated to the template so that cycle we will come to but first <clears throat> you know focus on that this is some structure we are creating for our budget so we will decide whether ours is a approved cost budget or not whether we are allowing uh, you know the planning to be done in the multiple transaction currency whether you use whether you have any workflow for the status change whether you have enabled the budgetary control now see as soon as you enable this this got added here in the list okay what, what is this now okay now you click on the budgetary control setting and it is asking me absolute advisory or track <clears throat> now there are two levels at which i can control my budget one is at the project level and the other one is at the top resource level now what kind of a enforcement i want to do on my budget whether it is absolute absolute when you say so let's say if you have allocated 20000 for your budget you cannot surpass that 20000 at all the system will not allow you to procure anything 
for that, uh, uh, you know, if if you have already consumed that twenty thousand, so let's say you are in a metro, you are in a metro project, and the government has allocated, uh, hundred crores for that. Now you have already reached that limit. Now in the system, if you go and uh, uh, you know uh, get uh, if if you go to pay uh, if you go to the system and if you try to procure something of let's say ten cr, the system will not allow you. Okay, unless there is a tolerance percentage. Now let's say the tolerance percentage is one. Okay, and uh, you have a budget of one cr. So till one lakh, still you can procure something. But if you are trying to procure some items of two lakhs or three lakhs, the system will not allow you to do that. Okay, this is an this is uh, an interview question. They will ask you about the control level. If you are planning to switch your jobs, they will definitely going to ask you about this. What is absolute and what is advisory? Now your requirement is that okay, fine. My project is very critical. I don't want the budget to come into the picture at all. Okay. The finance part should not come into the picture. Yes, it should give me the warning, but it should not be a hindrance in the uh, ongoing of my project. So you can put as advisory. Okay, it will give you a warning here that okay, you have already exceeded the budget amount. Do you still want to continue? But it will not stop you from procuring anything. <coughs> Sorry. If it is track, then it will only track your uh, expenses. Okay, it will not give you a warning even. There is absolutely no uh, control of the budget whatsoever. But if you want to track your commitment, your uh, have you heard of the word commitment? No. Uh... Okay, so what happens whenever so see, uh, project is interlinked with a lot of sub ledgers, especially uh, the payables and oracle time and labor are the main ones. So let's say, uh, let's say if you have uh, hired someone, okay, and you have hired it against a particular project. So in Oracle time and labor, what you will do, you will create a entry for that particular resource against a particular project. Now that is a commitment. Okay. Until and unless it is not in the projects as in, in the expenditure form as a cost, that is a commitment. Now you have validated that transaction in OTL. Now you will import that transaction into our PPM. Now, once that transaction is successfully imported into the PPM and we have an entry in the PPM module that is actual, we call it is an actual transaction. And now it is no more a commitment. Mm -hmm. Suppose if you procure any raw material, you create a payable invoice for a particular project against a particular task. That will remain as a commitment. But once you validate it and then interface into the PPM, it becomes an actual cost of that particular project. Until and unless uh, it's not there uh, in the PPM, it is not an actual cost. It's still uh, a commitment only. Getting this part? Uh, Ash, you mean to say uh, absolute means uh, <clears throat> it is like uh, the tolerance limit, they should not go. So at that time, it will give us an error when they cross the tolerance limit. Yes. Right? yes. Advisory means it will just give a warning though he crosses the uh, tolerance limit and he still he can continue. Yes. Tracking, it just tracks the cost of the yes. what 
he has done yes whatever uh, you have procured and against your budget whatever it is okay. whatever your budget is okay because what happens that uh, let's say why this tracking is also important uh, because let's say if you have a requirement of uh, uh, using an invoice method in which whatever the cost you have incurred and whatever the budget you have let's say you have one cr of the budget and you have procured uh, 10 lakhs of items okay now for this 10 lakhs of item to uh, you know to your uh, to your budget let's say uh, 10% of what you have totally incurred the cost of your total budget okay so your if your budget is 1 cr how much is the 10% of 1 cr it is 10 lakhs so an invoice of 10 lakhs will get automatically get created for your customer in ppm so if you have such scenarios of billing and that it is very essential for you to keep a track also okay so it will always validate okay it, uh, whatever your expenses are against the actual budget okay getting this yes sir okay prasanna is it clear for you mm. i will hear you one more time in the video uh, somewhat confusing uh, if any doubts mr in next class i will ask you oh it's okay you can ask now also no problem we can ask one more question you hmm. said this tolerance limit right hmm. for every project uh, how it is mapped because uh, like uh, i came across one uh, error like the tall you have reached uh, the tolerance limit it was the, the percentage So hmm. it didn't say the percentage; it said tolerance limit. So, hmm. uh, like how for that particular project, the tolerance limit it has been uh, re uh, re uh, reached. How can I check for that? Is it here only I have to come, or is it a different navigation for that? Oh, well, here only you have to come. Uh, so, uh, for that particular project, how I will get to know that? Okay. <clears throat> So this I thought of uh, explaining it later, but let's say you have created this financial plan. Yeah. Okay. Now you have said that I want it at the project level and resource level. I just want to keep it as a track. Now okay. advise uh, you want to keep it absolute, and the tolerance percent is ten percent. Okay. Now you create this. Okay. Right? Now your financial plan you have created. now what will you do when you create your project plan <clears throat> here you give this project a financial plan okay and then where do you give this project plan so here you give the project plan so the hierarchy is why ultimately why this all setups we are doing is to ultimately create a project okay 
this is our ultimate aim now how can you create a project you need a project template right till this part it is understood right yes. now in the project template you associate a project <coughs> plan okay. okay if you have a financial plan or a budget constraint you want to put then you associate the financial plan with the project plan so we are doing this part now okay okay in the next step we will create the project plan and when we will create the project plan whatever the financial plan we have created we will associate it okay yeah, I'm sorry to ask. Is <clears throat> we were in EBS also the project plan was being followed? In e business suit. Yes. Planning rates. Uh, yes, it was followed. Uh, have you uh, have you come across work plan? Yeah, work plan structure. Yes. Yes. So. So work the plan work structure is you know uh, what we have a resource breakdown structure planning yes this project planning this is it is not the same concept but it is similar okay okay we don't have a work plan uh, page or where you know we will uh, 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 whatever we do there it, it, it's not uh, apple to apple here but it is similar to what the work plan was any business suit Okay. But it in the uh, yeah, fusion, we just need to give all this. But in e-business, we used to enable that structure alone. That's all. But mm. we won't be limiting mm. it. Mm. Work plan structure you have created, then that is it. And uh, uh, that you can create it at the project level itself, right? Yes, project level. Yes, mm. here you got to do it at the template level. Okay. Okay, so we are currently in this stage, which is financial plan. Okay. So I'll again go back and create one. And if you see, these are the only two mandatory setup and project control. Those period profiles, spread curve, those are additional. Okay, so here also see here you can give what will be your planning amount whether it will be cost whether it will be revenue whether it will be revenue and cost cost and revenue I enable the budget control okay and I give project level absolute or tolerant percentage 10 and then this set assignment which we do in each and every setup. Okay, so now here you will decide what will be your amount type. Okay, whether it will be cost quantity, raw cost, burdened cost, raw cost rate, burden cost. So what all are the things you want to include in your project? What all are the things you want to allow so from here you can control what will be your planning level, project and task level, project and top task only or at the project level that also you can select here. Then <clears throat> your calendar, what will be your calendar, whether it is a project accounting calendar separately you are maintaining or uh, uh, the financial calendar you are maintaining. Then 
the cost rate derivation date type okay this one i don't know what is this one wait a minute Okay, this one I need to check what exactly is this setup. Then the period profile. Okay, see here. Here you give the period profile which we created earlier. And the currency settings. Whether you want to uh, assign resources in a single currency or multiple currency or if multiple currencies are there. What would be the rate type? What would be the date? Okay, whether it is from the date of the budget or from the date, from date of the budget line or to date of the budget line or fixed date. Let's say <clears throat> if you have from date of the budget line, so the date you have created the your budget, from that date onwards, you want to take the currency or you want to take the currency conversions for two date of that budget or if you have any fixed date in mind so that also you can select and you can give it here again the rate settings if you want to assign a particular rate schedule if you want that this sort of a projects which comes under I mean Hitachi Consulting which follow these rate schedules only it can be on the job based for example let's say uh, for the ERP consulting ERP consultant you are putting $90 per hour rate so that you can put here and it will be always be defaulted to the project yes of course you can go ahead and override it at any given point of time Then you have budgetary control settings, which we have already spoken of. Okay, then the generation option. Okay. So this tab again, I don't know. Oh, this tab is newly added. Okay, okay, got it. So like it is asking here, what will be the class of this financial plan we are creating? It is asking what would be the generation source, which means that uh, uh, whether uh, you are generating the forecast based on the financial plan type or the project plan type or based on the project resource. So we do the forecasting, okay, here. So on which basis, what would be the source of that forecasting? So that you will decide here. Then you have reporting options. So since we have taken it as approved cost budget, so this is automatically enabled. And then the report cost, whether you want to keep only raw cost or the burden cost you can decide here currency you want to take a ledger currency or the transaction currency you can decide upon it then this additional information which is there as a part of descriptive flex field like uh, we did it in the project so here also you can create a descriptive flex field a context code of your own so these are the things available in the financial budget. And when we are done with this, we will associate it to the project plan. Mostly financial budget will revolve around this part. Okay, this is a very critical part. Then 
this one which is your cost options that you have to carefully choose currency settings of course like what will be your currency rate settings also mostly this will be blank if you are using forecasting then this is useful or otherwise this is not useful dffs if you have this then like we created in the project foundation every module you can do that okay so for this you can oh no i Ash, there is two types, right? Like what is non-sponsored project and sponsor something you were showing? Is it the sponsored project? Uh, have you heard of grant management? Any business suit? No. Come again. Grant grant management. No, Ash. Okay. So grant management is a separate uh, uh, module altogether. It is a separate product. So what happens there is uh, uh, that it is so like if you are if you have an NGO, so there will be a lot of awards you will be getting from the government. There will be a lot of government funded projects would be there. Okay, so <clears throat> to track all that is specifically you have the grant management module. Similarly, here also. Uh, we, we are not discussing about the grant management, but we have a similar concept of the sponsored project. Okay, so if we select the sponsored project, so it is like it, it is already funded. Okay, so you don't have to uh, create the separate budget, those controls and all, uh, you know, things will be slightly different for them. Okay, but in our scope, we will only talk about for the non-sponsored because with the non sport with the non sponsored only we can do the billing okay we cannot do the billing for the uh, for the sponsored ones i believe okay that that i will check and let you know but as per my knowledge we cannot do that but i will get back to you with that tomorrow but this one in 99% of the cases you will have to deal with the non sponsored project Okay, I will explain you the sponsor project tomorrow. Okay. Okay, so I create one more time. I just keep it as it is. Now I create the project plan. So project plan will have different terminologies. Okay. <clears throat> No, it is not enabled. Okay, now I create our own cost project plan. Okay, now here you will select whether you want to do third party software for scheduling. So, third party software can be uh, have you heard of uh, Microsoft projects? Yes. Okay, so that if you are using that to, uh, you know, to do your project creation and scheduling, so this checkbox you need to check if you want this project plan to be enabled for your 
uh, projects which you are creating in Microsoft Project. Whether you want to enable the planning in multiple transaction currency, you can select here. Then the set assignment. Okay, so see here it is a different project plan options are given. It says enable costs for the project plan. Yes. Set unplanned assignment as planned assignment. Okay. So when you will create the project, okay, when you will create a project plan or the task, okay, which I will show you later in this session. So, okay, that day you remember, uh, Sheila, that we created a project and there were some planned amounts there. Yeah, right. Right? There were some planned dates. There were some uh, planned amount. There were some unplanned assignments will always be there in which you will not be dedicating a particular date. Okay? Those will be your unplanned assignments. Okay? Whether you want to include that also into the project, you can check or uncheck that. Okay. Then the calendar type, you can give accounting calendar or the project calendar. Okay. Okay. I got what this rate derivation date type is. This is the date from where uh, your project planning will start. Okay. So whether you want to take as this date or you want to take as the resource red date like if the resource uh, is recently joined now uh, my planning date could be this but now the resource has joined a month later so whether you want to take the plan date from the resource join date or the project plan date that you can decide from here Then the task setting, okay. You can see that you task plan date as the task assignment date, okay. So you have seen that there was a planned amount, there was a planned dates, that these are the dates in which these tasks are planned to happen, okay. And there will be a task assignment date also. So now you have planned this project. You have planned the estimates to be completed from 20th of November till 20th of December. Okay, this is your planned task date. But now the resource has joined on 1st of December. So it was assigned to the him on the 1st of December. Okay, so which date you want to choose, whether you want to take the task plan date itself as a task assigned date that you can check here. Whether you want to synchronize the transaction dates with the plan date. Okay, now <clears throat> you have plan date from 20th of November till 20th of December. Okay, this is your plan date. Now, whatever the transactions are happening in between okay before uh, this period or after this period that you want to take as the plan date only or you want to keep it as a transaction date only that you will decide here so normally we'll keep it as blank automatically roll up task plan date so this one i don't know why this checkbox is there Okay, this again, I'll let you know tomorrow. <clears throat> then your currency settings. Okay, what would be your rate type again, whether it is fixed, corporate, so this I'll leave it for now. Then your rates settings, whether you want to put any rate schedule here. 
can your progress now how do you want to calculate your progress here now this is manually you want to do <coughs> whether you want to do it based on the cost or based on the effort <clears throat> so this you can decide here sorry just give me a minute <coughs> estimated time to complete <clears throat> whether you want to put it manually or whichever is the remaining plan is so now you have completed 70 percent of the project estimated time to complete will be your 30 percent okay whether you want to allow negative estimated time to completion whether you want to update plan quantity in eac quantity you know what is eac It is estimate at <clears throat> completion. Hello, you are there with me? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So whether you want to update your planned quantity with the estimated... <clears throat> Sorry. Whether you uh, estimated at completion quantity, for example, you have planned... 20 laptops for this particular project but now you need 30 laptops okay uh, uh, as as you are estimating that uh, as the pro project progress further you now think that you need uh, 10 more laptops so whether you want to update your planned quantity with the estimated at completion quantity that checkbox you can put here what will be the <clears throat> primary percentage completion basis whether it is cost or effort that again you can select here and here you will be selecting your financial plan type okay this is how i selected my plan type and again this is your additional information any doubt here <clears throat> Okay, uh, you do one thing, you go through these setups, okay, because there are a lot of things in these setups, okay. See, like this checkbox, these checks are there. So when we come tomorrow, we'll discuss your doubts on these two part, okay. And tomorrow I'll give you a demo on how we can associate this with our project. So this entire cycle, I will be completing tomorrow then. Okay. Okay. Okay, fine. We'll wind up the session here today and we'll continue tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.